Hello and welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. Last week, the party arrived back in Buckland, ready to consume the whole town and their new magical orb. But first, they've got to blow up some ships, or at least try. Today, we'll make a few preparations and then make the journey to the open ocean to blow up some boats. Enjoy. Hello, welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. Uh, you've already heard that once from the disembodied voice who, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know how he got in there, but we now have a disembodied voice who sets up the episodes. Is this a well-paid disembodied? Pretty sure it's he, sort of. He, uh, he is working for free, wow. but also kind of threateningly. Okay, like, threateningly for free. Yeah, have you ever had like somebody come into your house and fold your clothes while angrily looking at you? Like, yes. you're going to... This you're gonna pay for this eventually. Yeah, happens all the time. Like enjoy it for now, but it's definitely Zordon. Yeah, he's got saving a... the world. I've never come into my house when Zordon was there angrily folding names. my clothes. Yeah, just saying he's got a look about him. this disembodied, headless voice. He got he's got a look about him. Mm. So, anyway. Is he bodiless? Uh, no. Yeah, you well, said disembodied. Disembodied. Disembodied, I disembodied and headless. Yes, disembodied. <laughs> the, the reason we're doing this unentertaining bit is because we're at the beginning of a new recording session. So these are a little special, and so we'll we'll record this all in one go, and we'll chop it up, and then you'll get to eat it, chew it up with your ears, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> right in the ear hole. But honestly, I believe this embodied voice probably got you up to speed. So we're going to now cut back quickly, and I'll, I'll we'll do a little brief little recap. We're all inside the Full Heart Manor on the Full Hammer Mine. The party has returned with the orb, with Moradin's tiny orb. They're getting prepared to use it. There are three warships full of orcs headed for Buckland. The plan has been decided that Grim and Duncan, the the mayor and, you know, just spitfire little dwarf of, of the town, who is just always itching for a fight, they're going to use a spell that was cast by Arlo where they can turn into mist. They're going to fly out to the ships, blow them up to the best of their ability with dynamite, Hopefully thinning out at least, thinning out the orc forces headed for town. The orcs, of course, are headed to attack the headquarters of the servants of the scale. The servants of the scale are, you know, people who are, you know, casting dispersions upon the council, their leadership. I mean, at this point, the council are snatching people, babies, snatching babies from cribs. I mean, they're killing people openly in the street now. Things are getting pretty bad in the world of Medin. Uh, The council is almost not hiding things anymore. We don't get to see that. We don't travel to every city. But uh, bad did, things are happening. Did the spooky voice not just explain this? Not all of it. I'm just, you know, I, I like to get us a little bit up to speed. He's cutting in on the spooky voice. I know. He's going to be even more upset. But the plan was Grim and Duncan heading out to blow up these boats. Grunkin. 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 Team Grunkin. Jack and Eros are going to set up shop. Jack is going to hold the button uh, on the Morden's tiny orb, and he is going to begin the process of consuming all of this city so they can take it... <sighs> elsewhere and put it somewhere else just like jeff cook just like jeff cook if you live in charleston or columbia south carolina you'll get that because you've seen his billboards <laughs> other than that you probably don't i don't nope he uh promised to eat a house if he if he couldn't sell it he would eat oh. an entire house <laughs> i said I can, he <laughs> I can respect that i'd like to call it this poor guy <laughs> This really big guy, <laughs> and, and, and this really big wow. guy, real estate state guy, put himself on a billboard. And I'll be honest, it was not nice of me to say. <laughs> but we were driving by one day, and his billboards always said, "If your house sold, or I'll buy it." <laughs> and I would just drive by one day, and I said, well, "Your house sold, or I'll eat it." <laughs> and then it just then it turned happened. into a thing. No, it never happened. Well, Thank need goodness. some fiber for that. Thank God. goodness. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, Jeff Cook, if you're listening to the show. Jeff Cook, he, he, if you're a listener for this, we respect you. He's since lost a lot of weight. And he, I mean, he's crushed, his business was already crushing it. I'm just a little peon. I feel I like we maybe should just cut this. We probably, will. <laughs> <laughs> we probably will cut it all out. We'll just do the D&D show, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. Okay. Maybe. What if after, the thing that... after our second recap and... Sharding on Jeff Cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get into the meat of things. Yep. Arlo is going to take a little nap, eight hours worth. Hopefully, be prepared for the fight whenever it arrives, if it arrives. Um, so yeah, that's about where we're at. And Jack is currently waiting for some armor. 
and some other supplies to be brought to him. Right, we're at the beginning of a new recording session. We are at the, you know, we're crossing over. And where we're going to begin, I believe, is with Grimm and Duncan, who have gone off to get supplies and begin their, their uh, you know, journey to blow up some ships. Or disable. Or disable, at least. Right. At least. So, Duncan, our short, sleeveless dwarf in this very cold climate with tats all down his arm, big, blonde, long, blonde hair to his shoulders, braided up, got his beard going. Does he not have the Servants of the Scale thing, like, tattooed yeah, on his arm? Yeah, I arms? think he does have a cool Servants of the Scale tattoo yeah. on his arm. If we haven't said that, he does. Absolutely. And his wrists are meaty enough to actually fit together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> meaty wrists. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, Duncan and Grimm are walking towards, like, the, the barracks and where they keep all the supplies and different things for their mining operations and stuff. This is where um, they, you know... Begin, gather up before they go down into the mines to mine planium and whatever else. A staging Um, area. A staging area. So Duncan and Grimm are walking that way, and Duncan says, Grimm, this is your plan, and uh, where is that Scottish accent? When you need it. Grimm, laddie. There he is. This is your plan. I don't know exactly what we're going to need, but... I'm wondering if you've got any idea for any supplies we might need before we journey on. Or maybe maybe I uh, jump the gun a little bit. We need to go back in and just join the others. Uh, well, I Some have... Some armor would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I say from the other room. <laughs> we're outside now. We're, 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 we're headed towards the, okay. the mine area. Gotcha. We hear I a, say from behind you. <laughs> yeah, we hear, we hear a, brief, a little tiny whisper on the wind. Barely oh, not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have um, rope and, you know, standard adventuring gear. We'll need something to light the dynamite, definitely. I can't create fire. I'm not sure if you could. Um, what I, what do you have? I, I don't know. Anything that could help us navigate the he, waters? He yeah. moves into a building where um, they've got, like, supplies. There's crates and things along the walls, pickaxes and things hanging on the door or the, the walls and everything. Um, he moves over to a box, opens it up. Inside are several of those little like Bunsen burner starters. They're little, um, almost spring loaded sparkers. A, yeah. A fl- kind of like a flint striker, but it's got a, you know, a little bend to it, pushes it back and forth and you just squeeze it one time and a bunch of sparks shoot out the front of it for lighting torches on, or like lighting candles on hats and lighting fires and different things that need to light. He says, well, I believe this ought to do for lighting dynamite at least. It should. It looks fine for me. How do you plan on getting to your destination. We're going after the runners, right? I believe that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm assuming we'll try to get as low as possible so that we can blow the rudder and hopefully a hole in the hull of the ship and it'll she'll just begin to sink. You should probably take <clears throat> some form of climbing gear, just in case. It, it is, takes yes. a little time to transform into mist and out of mist, so um, initially coming out of it and grabbing onto the rudder or you know, whatever's back there might be a little tricky. So climbing gear. Personally, I'm not at my best right now. So if you have potions, uh, anything that could help me get up to snuff. I don't have any potions in here. We might have something inside or maybe there was someone wandering around who's got a little bit of something for you. Um, if nothing else, I'll give you some liquid courage before we got, go out there. And he like pats his, he, he, he pats his hip. When you look down, you can see there's a little leather pouch that's ornately decorated very nice, very, very high quality. And he unsnaps it, and there's a silver flask in his th- in his uh, little pouch. And he pats it and snaps it back or whatever. He's like, you know what? Go ahead and have a sip. And he, t- he takes it out and hands it to you. The flask, flask of holding. <laughs> the flask of holding. <laughs> Grim just, for the next 20 minutes, is just gulping. <laughs> no, Eyes um, completely red. <laughs> um... This stuff, oh, it doesn't do this. What are we doing? It doesn't help you uh, with any fatigue, but it, this this liquid courage gives you, it gives you uh, the the gumption, the go ahead, to be more confident in the things that you do. So, for the next you know, ten out twelve hours, you'll be able to re-roll. If you if you believe something failed, it'll be like an extra inspiration point. And also, I meant to give Zenas a point of inspiration for this plan. Um, I'm giving Zenas a point of inspiration for this plan, as well as the rest of you all for participating in a very 
wild and crazy <laughs> separated plants. So I want everybody to have a point of inspiration, but you'll get kind of technically two of those for taking a sip of um, Duncan's flask. And he looks at you nice. expectantly like, kind of like, the, uh, did you like it kind of look? This stuff is strong. Yeah. You don't have any idea where you got this <laughs> from. Uh, he, you know, like, like, hand me that lighter back. <laughs> uh, I already have a point of inspiration. I don't get to. I just say Right, you got to say You got a refresher. Yeah. 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 Quick, use it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I bring it down. That burns. But it burns good. If you say so, <laughs> sure, yes. Um, I do feel more courageous, I guess. More sure of what's going to happen, let's say. Um, and I give it back to him. That's, so That's what it's for. Um, it in. Do you, you have, does he have weapons? He's got like, you have weapons? Yeah, he does. He has weapons. He's always strapped with two like, That's what almost thought. like great axe handles, but they're cut short. <laughs> nice. he's, just, he's got them strapped to his back. So all. are they like double bit or is single bit? Uh, single bit, but they're just, they're big boys just hanging off his axes. back. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, he's, he says, I believe these ought to do for uh, climbing and chopping, if you know what I mean. But uh, here's some, here's some climbing picks for you. We use them down in the mines as well. Um, and he, opens up a box and there's, you know, climbing, like, people use for ice or rocks or whatever, climbing picks for you to use. Um, that'll aid you in holding on to that wood. And Duncan, he kind of leans into you and he says, uh, Grandma, I feel like it's a, bad, it's a bad time for me to tell you this. I'm a dense little dwarf and I can't swim. <laughs> um... Well, hopefully you won't have to. Um, I'm assuming the magic works whether you're above water or below. So if you fall off the rudder, just turn back into mist and get right back on that horse, so to speak. That makes a lot of sense. Now, Takes Grim, a minute, though, so you sink a little bit. Now, Grim, if you hear a kaplunk about Duncan-sized, <laughs> and I don't, you don't see any mist come out of the water, if you get a chance... I'm going to be at the bottom. <laughs> but this, I don't float. I just don't, don't float. I'm, I've, try, I've tried swimming. It's not for me. And if I've hit the... I'll be, I'll be at the bottom. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm a fairly confident swimmer, I suppose. I, I will do my best to get you out of there. Excellent. But not before we complete the mission. Mission comes first. Okay. I love That's how good. you're a fairly confident swimmer, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you... Cause, Meta, Grim yeah. can hold his breath for a, a, a long time. Yep. So if he doesn't swim, he's not going to die immediately. He'll just be sitting on the bottom. <laughs> Got it. We'll come find you. I just picture okay. dwarves as like just compact, just all rocks. muscle. It's like so. I just picture he's just like do just upright, just <laughs> free falling in the water. Embeds like a foot into the mud and gets down yeah, there. Big plume. Anyway, um, um, I honestly I don't think of anything else you might need because okay. they don't have like swimming gear because it's a mine. So like the picks for climbing, yeah, the thing to light it. Um, he grabs he grabs a, a length of rope for himself as well, um, and he says, "I've never been missed before either. I'm hoping that it's simple. What's our plan? I know I assume we'll split up one on each one on one on one ship, one on another." But what about the third? Just whoever, whenever, whoever finishes first, or we'll meet up at the rudder of the third ship. And so, my plan is to attack sh the ships on either side. I'll go for the one on the right, facing them. You go for the one on the left. Uh, once we blow those rudders, yeah, I assume we we just meet back at the um, at the main rudder. If or if you want to, you can remain missed, and I'll go for the rudder, and you just kind of hang back and hover around just in case something goes wrong. Makes sense to me. Either way. Backup plan. Right. So how many... I gave him... He's only got... Does he have one or two sticks of dynamite? That I don't remember how many you gave him. I think I gave him one. Okay. Because I have three, and I left one with the uh, people okay so yeah he's so he says well i've only got one stick of dynamite so it sounds sounds good if something <laughs> happens to one of us we'll come and and here's another thing if something happens to you grim and it comes down to us blowing that rudder or you turning back into mist and escaping if at least drop off the dynamite that way i can catch it floating in the water that way you're not our dynamite's not mist floating about if you understand i gotcha 
Um, I could just see Duncan like, oh, there it is, and diving in after it and continuing <laughs> on. <laughs> is is there a way? Do you have um, a sort of viscous, sticky material that we could use to attach this, or are we just going to use ropes? Uh, he opens up another. He smiles and he opens up. Viscous and sticky it is, uh, and he pops up an, a, another horse. another crate. It's like surround. I don't. I'm making this crap up as far as the material, but I'm picturing it like he opens up a metal box and like dry ice fog comes out of it because the stuff like if it gets warm too long it you know loses its stickiness somewhat. Mm. And he grabs a handful of this putty. He's like, we use this to stick explosives and other things to walls down in the mines. And he grabs some and he sticks it into like a little metal thermos thing that's next to this box and he puts one down on his hip and he hands you another one. Um, does the does the the mimic keep things at the same temperature? Um, that's what the thermos is for, ain't it? That's what the thermos is for. Yeah, but, but it's it's technically like an extra dimensional space where you have so like I guess a certain number yeah. of hours of air. So I don't know how <coughs> temperature is affected. If I stick a lit torch in there, then I gotta pull it out the exact same. Yes, I would, technically not because of the air, but yeah, I would say a lit torch. No, it things warm up slower in, in the mimic. Okay, so I'm gonna put the goo of the scale <laughs> yeah. it as the goo, goo or putty or whatever. Jug of goo, one word. Jug of goo. Jug. Oh, wait, jug of goo. That okay, sounds so nasty. Picks. Sounds like a. Something you scrape up outside of go kart tracks. New mm. product from Sunny D. <laughs> mm. um, this will come in handy if, if not for blowing the rudders, for maybe sticking it onto the side of one of the ships. Potentially, I have three sticks myself um, to your one, so we can do we could do some damage. Excellent. Shall we make our way back to the manor and prepare for whatever is about to happen? Let's. <laughs> Donkey can't swim. You just don't. St- Stick him to the side of the boat. With it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, one other thing he does say as well, or no, we're, we are heading back to the to manor as well. In the meantime, uh, a young soldier, a young you know servant of the skill person, the person who who left earlier to get you the things that you needed, um, Jack. He comes back with some plate armor that you asked for, um, and what was the other thing that you were looking for? Go-go garments. The go-go garments, he says, He says I had to run all the way down to town, but uh, I got the go-go garments. You'll, you won't freeze out there while you're holding on to that to that orb, as well as his armor to go ahead and put on. So he tosses both of those towards you, Jack. Thank you. I will... Do you have a place I can put these on? Are you, are you bashful? It, we're kind of in the middle of everything. I'd be getting in the way. Also, I'm going to need... At least a couple of people to help me put on the plate armor. Otherwise, it's going to take me like half an hour. Wash washrooms down washrooms down the hall. I'll help you put it on. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so he takes you away and <laughs> puts you, <laughs> but it takes you down the hall. Arlo is sleeping. Yeah, um, Arlo is like sleeping on yeah. the book he was just holding. Oh here. wait, let me grab that book real quick. I don't know, like. <laughs> Kick it out from under his head. <laughs> just let Arlo. Yeah, Arlo's head just. <laughs> he's still. He's still out. He is dead tired. You grab the book. Put it in my satchel. You grab the book. Um, Eros, and your you're kind of like hands in your pockets, kicking around, trying to figure out where exactly you're you're fitting in right now. You know, oh, you were. I thought I was sit- just gonna sit down since everyone. I'm pretty sure they were in a different room. I was just kind of just like sitting down. Yeah, they had waiting. gone outside to a different building. Um, so you were in there with Jack. Um, you, but you put your hands in your pocket and you feel a little little piece of metal that you don't recognize in there. Ooh. You pull it out, and in your hand is a little pewter colored ring and there's a little note attached to it in very bright shiny paper um and it's got on written in, in some very ornate script you can read right yeah i can yes i <laughs> <Yeah>. can <laughs> and, well darlo can't <laughs> i'm getting there yeah, yeah. i'm getting um there. but written in the script the uh on that note tied to this ring it says uh just in case you need it I appreciate a new follower, even in times as dire as these. And then there's a dash, and it says, GG. Oh, do I need to make, like, an insight rule? Or can I... Or can, or can, or can, or can, or can. Uh, sh- sure. Oh. 
Why did I pick that <clears> out of <throat> all things? Negative two. Three. Close enough. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> you sit there for a long time trying to you know figure out what this thing is, but you can tell it feels magical. So I'm assuming when I see that note, I'm just like, boop. And then I look at it. Yeah, so as you're holding it, you're attuning to this magical item. This is a ring of charisma. Oh, Garl has given you a li- just a little boost, knowing that you're a follower of his, and he's given you a ring that will give you a plus one to your charisma modifier, as long as you're wearing it. It will add a plus one to your charisma modifier. That is quite a powerful item. Yeah. I shall put that on my ring. Well, I mean on my finger. Yes. Put this ring on my ring. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like when, <laughs> whenever Eros is speaking or alone, he's starts to growl a little bit <laughs> is that like a tiefling thing um so eros you're in the room uh and duncan and Grimm come back in at this point albert is not really anywhere to be found the leader of the servants of the scale albert nor corinne kate and torque full heart um torque is the son of albert and corinne uh who are the leaders of this organization kate and torque are they're off getting prepared you know, there's a battle coming, and they're trying to protect the gates and different things like that. Albert and Corinne um, have gone to um, Eros. they probably been passing through a little bit with you. But they're now upstairs tending to Justine and making sure that she's going to be able to, you know, endure all this. It really took, a, took it out of her when she transported all of you all the way across the continent and then came back herself. Um, she, her, you know, her, she's very fatigued, very exhausted, so they're up dealing with her and, and getting her prepared they're also not warriors so at this point they're kind of locked away preparing for the battle that's you know about to happen or whatever getting prepared gathering their books and papers and researches and everything making sure that whenever they go into this orb even if something goes horribly wrong and you know a thousand orcs end up inside this orb, orb with them that they'll hopefully be able to survive and figure that out so that's what they're up to um <clears throat> but duncan comes back in with Grim, um, and he sees Arlo on the ground. Jack, by this time, it's been like maybe, you know, since they left, you guys had to walk out there, gather, have a conversation. I know it was very short for us, but we'll say that you, know, you guys were talking and planning and getting acquainted. Um, it took about an hour or so, hour and a half, <clears throat> before you walked out there and came back with your supplies. Jack, you're coming back in from getting your plate armor put on. You've been reading your book a little bit. You know, got... Is my armor cool? Your armor is cool. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm what do you want it to look jail. like? What's that? What do you What do you want it to look like? I don't know. The what's the what's the full heart symbol? Like a hammer and a sickle kind of deal, or? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dang, it's been so long since I pictured the servants of the scale. The servants symbol. of the scale symbol was it's, like the tree of life looking type deal. Yeah, like yeah. an Yggdrasil. Big oak tree looking thing. Yeah, that's what's that's what's inscribed on the on the left breast of your armor, um, on one of the plates. So like the Lords of Iron from Destiny. No, it was on the right breast. <laughs> that's sure. different. Right above that right chest organ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's on there. Um, it's a little bit worn. It's not brand My new. Leather. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not brand new. It also has a jetpack and a Gatling gun. That's good. On That's the good. forearm. The jetpack is also on the forearm. <laughs> yes. The jetpack is used as thrust to keep the to manage the recoil of the Gatling gun. It's realistic, right? This is useless. <laughs> it's just you stick your hand in the air. And, of course not. Of course you're not. You're done guys. with combat. Like your entire body, except for one arm, is completely scorched. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit melted in little spots. No, you got on your armor. It looks cool. You're walking back into the room. Arrows. You're fiddling with your new ring. Oh yeah, is um, it like showy? Like, will it like bling? Because you're prettier now. It's not. Okay. It's not super flashy. Okay, that's good. But it's shiny. Like if someone sees it, they'd be like, "Ooh, nice ring." And you'd be like, "Yeah, I know it's pretty nice." And well, I don't want to like someone just like. There's like, you know, there's like whenever you're crowd and just like blings everywhere whenever you're moving your hand. Like there's like diamonds that blings in cameras. Like a diamond? I've Um, never seen a diamond that blings so hard in a camera that it struck my attention. I think you'll be all right. He said said it's just a pewter ring. It's like, it it looks like that cup. Yeah, well, I assumed that, but I just wanted to make sure. No, you're not, you're not looking too flashy. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, But Duncan and Grim enter back in the room. The four of you are in there, or yeah. Uh, 
Arlo's on the floor. Four of you are in there. Um, and Duncan says, All right, Grim and I have got our supplies. I think we're ready to turn into mist. And Arlo's sleeping. I think we're ready to turn into mist and get this party started. What about you all? Um, someone's going to need to tell me where to stand to start this orb fiasco. Oh. I'll walk you out there, absolutely. Um, one other thing that we haven't discussed yet, but we need to, is that there is an, an orc stronghold of the, the armed forces uh, to the east on, the, on this island. Many miles to the east on the northern shore of the island, there's also an orc stronghold. So, I have no doubt that they'll be sending forces to come with and, and aid the boats that are coming in on the, from the ocean. That force will be much smaller, and I have no doubt that our people will be able to hold them off at the gate. But, Jack, Eros, we, if something were to go wrong, you, there, there will be possibly more threats than what come from the water. Grim and I are going to do our best to keep those away from you and to keep the gate from coming down, but I need you to be prepared that you may be, you may be attacked. Or at least you may have some enemies coming through the forest or something. So just be prepared, Eros especially, if you're going to be keeping watch. Be prepared, ready to go get help or something mm. in case these people are coming through. Uh, I, the orcs aren't the most tactically smart, but uh, what they lack in intelligence, they make up for in numbers and tenacity. So just be careful. Do you have a couple of guards you could spare? Yeah. There'll be guards going back and forth, absolutely. Um, I won't make them stand out here for the duration, but if you see someone coming, you know, run for help, or um, we'll have some people keeping watch from a distance. We have the, You're absolutely a priority, but there are also things that plan B, if you were to fall, uh, we need to protect some other things as well, and we've got limited men. Yeah. Speaking of priorities, theoretically, can they all be moved from its starting position, does the dome continue expanding from its original point, no matter where the orb is within the... Albert would be the better one to ask, but from what I understand, we don't really know. No one's ever really used this... We don't know if any mortal has ever used this item before. We don't know if it's been locked away for all eternity. All we have is best guesses and writings from things from the Church of Maradin uh, that tell us, you know, pictures and, and things like that to show us how things are might work. But I really don't know. I see. I hope. I hope so. If you need to, if you need to move around, I certainly hope you'll be able to dodge an arrow or something. If you need to, we shall see. I suppose. I'm thinking more along the lines of if something critical is outside the radius that is it expanded to, and there's something we can give up on the other side. Could I run towards it? That's absolutely my hope. I'd say prioritize the manner. If something goes down and you can move, run to the manor. Make sure, make sure that the full hearts. Make sure that Justine and, and Torque and Kate and Albert and Corinne and all of our records in the mine get, you know, within the orb. So I can hold off. I can hold off with the city if need be. Should we start with? Should we start from the mine, like directly between the manor and the mine? I'd prefer if we start in the middle. Our goal is to get the whole, our the city and the mine, if we can. Okay. Well, we'll start there. And if possible, and if need be, I can fall back to the mine and the manor and capture them only. Excellent. That sounds like a plan to me. <clears throat> so Arlo is unaware of like the other forces that are on the land and stuff like that. Gotcha. Somewhat. Eros mm -hmm. is aware. Jack is aware. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Arlo is not. He is right. out. Yeah, yeah. If I have to cut off the front of this property, and we're only taking the manor and the mine I would like you to run as fast as you can to get out of the radius they're not going to need protection inside the orb but your men will still be out here defending this position whether what the orc seek is here or not if the city of Buckland can't get inside the orb neither will I my loyalty is with the servants of the scale but I've also got a city to protect and I'll die to do it captain goes down with his ship I suppose yes he does not to interrupt something so dramatic um, how difficult would it be for me to get a shield? We can grab. I'll go. I'll go to the armory yeah. and grab you one. Excellent. Um, make it cool looking. He actually says, "I don't have to do. That. I'm the mayor here." <laughs> he calls out and he says, "Will someone bring Grim a shield?" 
How big do you want it to be? Come. <laughs> big enough for me. And he like, <laughs> like has his hands down like this. Yeah. like a big one. <laughs> like twice the size. It's like, of... Have you ever seen a French door? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Eros kind of just like slowly raises his hand. Can I have a sword too? Since Kate took mine. Oh, absolutely. Um, he gra- he he, and a sword too. For Eros, make sure it's a good weight for a for a child. Yeah. A young adult. <laughs> yeah, most swords I'm just a child, not more a than three adult. pounds. Huh? Most swords weren't more than three pounds. That's pretty light. Uh-huh. It Makes sense. Light. It's crazy. And the short and not short sword was I using was a short sword, so I thought Aren't it was you? pretty good. Duncan, I'm all armored up. I've got some reading material. I'm ready to sit down and push a button. Okay. I do you want to have said you were reading inside while you're getting your armor put on? That way you can go ahead and take that level. Um, and you can continue uh, to read no, later on. Yeah, so I, I know can, you've been waiting a long time on a level. I can go ahead and take the level, but I mean, I'm not going to use it till I use it, obviously. So, yeah. I actually, that's what I was doing on my phone earlier. Okay. Arlo has since curled into a wad of gnome, <laughs> and he is like kicking his leg deep in dream like a dog. What level are you guys? 11? 11. I'm level something. Okay. I won't get uh, Echo Knight till 12. So. Okay. I'm then at, I'm at 9 right now with the fighter. I get, I'm get i at level 10 right now as a character. Excellent. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, Duncan takes you out. Um, uh, the, the shield and the sword come back. It's a you know, steel short sword. He grabs for you, Eros. Um, it's a shield. <laughs> it's a shield. I forget what material a shield would be made. I'm sure it would be like wood or iron or metal of some kind. Or yeah, it'd be or like a uh, some kind of metal alloy iron type situation. Um, so it's got a like big a, tree on the front. It's like a door shape, or is it like one of the cool like round Spartan shields? Or that's why I was asking what kind oh, of shape you want. Oh, sorry. Um, definitely not round. I don't like the round shapes. No round. Okay, so it's, it's a big, so it's a big it rectangular shield. shield. Yeah. Well, I imagine like the the classic kind of like tapers to a soft point. Okay. Sure. That's heater what shield. I, that's what you got. Is that, heater, is that a heater shield? Something sounds. You're right. asking the sure. wrong guy. Yeah. We know what we're talking about. Yeah. Ooh, sure. I, I was shaped. picturing a big yeah. like like you yeah. said a big French door like you know tower shield. Yeah. And I, in my head, I immediately pictured. Well, I guess Duncan and Grim are going to be surfing back. <laughs> I guess that's the kind of D&D campaign I'm running. Yeah, I was picturing like the riot shield kind of thing. Like just like the refrigerator half of a soup door. can shape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So um, he's Duncan. The, the, the uh, materials and stuff arrive. Um, Duncan calls upstairs and he says, Albert, we're about to begin. You want to come down here and. Say goodbye to the men and boy who might save your skin. Albert comes to the top of the stairs, um, and he walks down. He says, "I'm sorry. I, I've been preparing. I've been preparing for um, whatever's about to happen here. I'm I'm no warrior, as the four of you have proven to be. And I know that strange things have happened. I know that some of you are old friends and some of you are new friends. Uh, but I appreciate your willingness to." die for this cause. I know that you've seen the horrors of what's going on in this world um, and I know that you're fighting to, to bring the balance back to the place that we get to call home. It's worth saving, I believe, and we're putting our faith in you. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Read the room, John. Read the room. Not time for a Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's always time for a Mountain Dew. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do that. <laughs> Albert cracks a cold one tosses it, <laughs> and tosses it. He's like, y'all want a shotgun one for you? I already have. <laughs> yeah. He um, might be toasting to the situation. Yeah, yeah. but he does. He says, he says thank you. Um, and he says, we'll... <laughs> Uh, I'll just wait, John, till you finish cons- loudly consuming. Because John is loudly fiddling with a soda, it's time to hear from this week's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Mountain Mist. 
a soda that's locally brewed right here in Buckley. Stop by for a case before a reckless party of adventurers puts our whole town inside of a magic orb. That's Mountain Mist Soda. Use code Dungeon Boys at checkout for 10% off. Thank you for listening to this word from our sponsors. Back to the episode. Just Go ahead, let loose a belt. Just so Go ahead, just get a like... cup. <laughs> I don't know. Why'd you put the cat back on for later when you're gonna do it again? It's gonna fall over. <laughs> this is okay. It's all right. You're yeah. fine, John. I'm I'll sorry. cut this part out. But it's also kind of funny, so maybe I'll leave it in. Maybe leave it Marker. in. Marker. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. So he said that thing. I mean, he's lo- he's looking in your eyes, fellas, at this point, and he's he's thanking you, uh, and he says, "I I hope to see you at." Uh, the general destination we've decided upon. This is like the hand on the shoulder, look into the eye, thank you kind of moment? Yes, that's that kind of moment. Yeah. It's a pleasure to serve, Mr. Fullheart. Thank you for the armor, and we'll do our best to get you home safely. Well, to your new home. Get your old home to your new home. Yes, I know it's a very confusing situation we're in, but such is the world of magic and war. Mm-hmm. John. I don't mean to do that. He moves to you, Eros. He puts a hand on your shoulder and he says... Knees you right in the yeah. gut. <laughs> he says, Eros, you started out here uh, under contract spying upon us, but you've proven to be a faithful warrior and a champion of our cause as well. Um, I know you're but a boy, but you've proven quite powerful and, again, we're putting our faith in in you, so... Hope you carry that weight well, and I hope you survive this ordeal. No pressure. No pressure. Gotcha. He also called you a butter boy. Yeah. Butter boy. Did he? Butter boy. You are I know butter, you're boy. butter boy. <laughs> butter boy. Um, he takes a hand off. He says, I've, I've got more preparations to do. I trust you all to enact your plan. I assume there will be some sort of effect of the orb that we'll notice as it comes by. Um, I hope the, the orb ends up being the, exactly the thing that we hope it is. Um, and we'll be prepared to meet you on the other side. Sounds good. He turns and heads back up the stairs. He turns to Duncan, and they share like a uh, a wordless best buddies kind of nod. Um, <laughs> Duncan turns around and says, "Well, fellas, let's go." And he trudges out the front door, walking through the field, headed down towards the main city proper of Buckland. Again, you guys are abreast, walking slow motion. To where you're supposed to be grim with a brand brand spanking new shield on his arm. Eros shoving a sword down in its scabbard on his hip. You're a, you're a Batman or a Hitman? Oh, I thought it was like that too. Okay, so, when you, so putting his sword down in his scabbard on his hip. Uh, Jack does one of the, sh- the shoulder the shoulder setups with he shakes the bicep out. You know, walking in slow motion towards this area. Um, Can't really put the lance anywhere, so he's just carrying it. Maybe using like a walking stick kind yeah. of deal. At this point, I imagine you probably already have the orb in your hand. Wherever it was before, you've already got the orb. And you're prepared to use this little blue ball to consume this whole area. Um, and you get out to that area. It's been a couple hours now. Um, getting prepped and getting all your materials and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the pig. <laughs> you know, um, I have a pig. So like everybody else had the cool moment. Arlo is just, he's <clears throat> snoozing away. The yeah. Z's are floating up. Like, in Arlo's deep and contented dreams, he's, like, standing on the shore looking out over the ocean. And there's a bright flash. And a moment later, a pressure wave just blows past and blows his cool hat with all his books on. <laughs> you see a tiny little mushroom cloud in the distance. <laughs> and he smiles. Yeah. I just picture whenever you find, like, if everything's hitting the van and, like, they really need you and you finally wake up after eight hours just, like, heavy guitar solo is occurring like <laughs> your eyes open like the camera is tight on your eyes and your eyes open just like do, 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 do. you walk outside uh, Arlo's like, poor bloodshot eyes yeah. <laughs> Arlo walks out the front door Jack's sitting on the ground with the orb and you're just like well they're not back yet no I'm going good luck Arlo <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the first time you dove off this front porch as an eagle right <laughs> All right. There's room for more. So you guys go walking. I'll go get them. <laughs> heading down to the center of this field. And you get to a certain point at the center of this field. And people who are watching on YouTube will be able to see a map of um, 
I'll have to bring it up for you guys. <laughs> if you're not on YouTube, what is wrong with you? Welcome to the ocean. Here's a map. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say the ocean? You no, know, you you said something about a map, and I looked up expecting to see it, and I saw just the ocean. <laughs> I was like, yep, there it is. <laughs> you guys do some walking. It takes you a little while. This is a pretty long field, a couple miles long. So you guys walk into the middle of the field, um, and you're you're out there. You can see the city down beyond you in the distance. You can see to the north of Full Hammer Mine. And for this moment, you all feel pretty small in this field, knowing that you're going to have to wait a good long time to consume all the things that you need to consume to get everything that you want. Um, everything seems and feels a little more distant than you thought it might be just because of the weight of the situation. To your east is a forest, um, not impenetrable, uh, but dense. To your west is a wall and farms and different agricultural things where the people of Buckland grow their crops. Uh, to your south, of course, is the city of Buckland where there are you know hundreds if not thousands of people whose lives are you tra- you're trying to save and the weight of this moment you know begins to you at least feel it a little bit um duncan takes a deep breath and he says jack yes you need to stay here hold the button consume us all we're directly between the dense forest and the farms yeah okay we need okay. you to literally hold down the fort yeah eros pay attention to jack don't get distracted if you can make sure nothing harms him I don't expect you'll meet with many forces, but I've been surprised before. Are you ready? Nope. Me neither. I'm about to fly out as a piece of a bit of mist and blow up a warship. I'm not ready either. But my first battle, my pa told me, you'll never be ready. Or at least you won't know if you were until you get to the end. So I hope to see you there. Mm-hmm. He looks at Grim and he says, I suppose now's the moment... <coughs> We let this one press a button, and the two of you, tur- two, the two of us, turn into some mist and fly off to blow up some orcs, eh? I suppose it is. And Grim pulls out the mask of many faces and slips it on. <laughs> it's a handy little trick. It might come in handy later. <laughs> <laughs> That's all in character. Too many hands. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, stupid Grim. Stupid. <laughs> just push the button, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> this dwarf is so cool. I just. <laughs> all right. So. He only heard the cool thing you said. Um, <laughs> and he says, Jack, when you're ready. I've, I suppose now is as good a time as any. Well, hold on. Everyone who doesn't want to be in the orb. I touch it. Shoot, we didn't get <laughs> We didn't get Arlo. <laughs> Slow walk back to Arlo. <laughs> <laughs> Arrows, go we'll drag him out here. Try not to wake him up. Yeah. Wait, he didn't give me... The power to turn into mist, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he did. Quiet. Well, I guess I do that. Okay, so you take a minute of uh, concentrating. Yeah. No, oh, I thought I was assuming you just like walk for a minute and then do that. You, yeah. you, you can't, By the you, time you get there. Yeah, yeah but then You're I, have to like carry him back though because you can't yeah. carry him as mist, I don't think. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk. I I'm did, just like, gonna take a lot more long. Tucked under the arm like a football. <laughs> yeah. While he's going, I'm going to shotgun two health potions real quick. Okay, Woo! do that. Um, Eros, you make a trip back, and you pick up Arlo, uh, and you put him piggyback style on your back. He's so tired, he doesn't wake up. This is just a little accidental comedy for you all. We just <laughs> forgot a little bit of the mechanics that, that we had talked There's about last week. There's a little bit week. of drool coming out of his shoulder. Um, but yeah, on, on your back is like a little gnomish Arlo, and you're trudging back towards the thing. You arrive as, as you know very quickly. It just took you about five minutes to run there, run back. Um, and you're standing there now, you grab Arlo's hand and you place it on the orb. Ding! You place your own hand on the orb. So, purely at, uh, up to the DM at sure. this point. When Arlo is being jostled around, gently, of course, of course but still yeah. jostled, could it be that maybe one of the potions in my pack would just fall out? That's, that, it's that's a stretch. A, that's a stretch. But you don't know if you don't ask. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a stretch. I'm sorry. Aww. That's a stretch. I've already had I've already had divine intervention to place something in in Eris's pocket. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I do appreciate the Josh is calling back to a potion that should be in his pack from episode two. <laughs> from three years ago. <laughs> yeah, three years ago. Three in, years in ago. In game, like two months, but... Going back, I have a potion that removes poison and removes all levels of exhaustion. Yeah. Poor Grim. That was one level of exhaustion. All levels of exhaustion. 
Mm-hmm. Grim, did you get your health? I did. I okay. got 31 hit points. All right, so uh, Duncan is standing there holding his gear, um, loaded down, ready to turn into mist as he waits for you all. He's like, now, I think we're ready. And he, everybody, but he doesn't put his hand on there, but he gestures for you all to put your hands on there. Eros places uh, Arlo's little gnome hand on there. He places his hand. Grim places his hand. And now, Jack, you're prepared. Are we ready? Anyone else staying out of this party? No, let's do it. Three, two, one. <laughs> so, Bye. whenever whenever Jack presses the button of this orb, um, all of you feel a jolt of, of magic pass through your hands and are surrounding your, your hands and fingers. There's a brief little cloud of purple mist. Um, that you know fizzles and kind of like sucks into your body a little bit, and you feel as though somehow you're attuned to this item right now. You feel a connection to it. Uh, of course, this doesn't happen for Duncan. Everybody's fine. There's no damage taken. But the thing that you notice chiefly first is that where you expected Ar- or Jack to be standing there or sitting there, you know, prepare or just his normal self. When you look down, Jack is now in a very medita- meditative stance, sitting. But his eyes are completely glossed over and wide open with purple pulsing like magic mist and fog. Um, (laughs) uh, The whites of his eyes have turned purple. He is like, you know, staring off into space. Very, again, very Guardians of the Galaxy light kind of. And he is, you know, he is not there to you. He is not perceiving you. He is, he is just now pretty much a statue holding this button down with purple magic flowing over his eyes. Um, Duncan says, Well, I don't think I expected that, but we're in it now. Look. And you you look down, and around the orb, there's just a tiny little radius directly under where his hand is. And you can see just the, the, a faded, translucent wall expanding very slowly the longer he holds it. How conscious am I? I will get to you in a moment. Gotcha. We'll get to you in a moment. Um, we can. We all felt the little. little yeah, you zap, all right? felt the little zap. Being just as Arlo being asleep, I can't do many things. But if I feel that, and I'm like Yoda backpacking on uh-huh. arrows, I'm gonna be like, mm, and I just I'm gonna take my hand and just like rub it on his face. Okay, <laughs> I got them. <laughs> <laughs> You thud to the ground. Restart the eight hours of sleep. <laughs> Roll no. a constitution saving throw. Should I? Sure. Oh, it's a see. jolt. Oh, I thought it was going to be a joke. Let's see. Let's saving see. throw? That's a 21. You're still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you thud <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> you no, just... I, did. I thought it was a joke. I, did. I didn't. Say <laughs> I'm I sorry. Didn't it's all right. It's all a character moment. <laughs> so it's hey, just a... Uh, you just got attuned to one of the most ma- magical... Pa- most powerful magical items you've ever seen in your whole life. Your friend is now glossed over like a freaking magic zombie. You're holding another friend who also attuned to this magic item. It would be, it would make sense that you might, woo, you know, drop him. You pick him back up. He's back on your back. Um, but more the, drool. More. The radius is expanding slowly, slowly, slowly. But you can tell, like, I think it's working. Duncan says, "We ought to get going, Grim," and he begins to like, you know. Think really hard about turning into mist for a moment. I do the same. John, did you leave candy on my kitchen table? Uh, yeah. It was the panda thing. Can Brindley have them? Yeah, he can. Okay. Yeah, she can. I was gonna. <laughs> I planned on eating it, but until right. it now. Um. After a moment, you are both mist. Uh, the way you experience the world is, however, mist would experience the world. I guess. Um, you're conscious of your movements. I imagine you can see. Mag- ma- through magic means, mm-hmm. um, and the two your two mists of varying colors, somewhat I guess you <laughs> go off towards the ships. What time is it? It's like nighttime, right? Um, at this point, gosh, I should have remembered what time. I thought you guys kind of like arrived back there in the morning time. I don't remember. Or was I, it I thought it was like midnight, but I, I might be wrong. I might just be imagining. We were underground, so it was dark in our last thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's then call it. Here. Let's call it around midday. I think we're instead of midnight, we're midday. It's daylight, and those ships are about to land, and you know. So Arlo will be coming to at about dark thirty. Yeah. 
Um, as a mist dude person, um, your only action is you can take a dash or you can revert to your regular form. It takes a minute. Um, you also have resistance to any damage from a non-magical weapon. Excellent. So, dashing it all the way. Dashing all the way. Duncan is keeping up with you. Movement, current movement speed is 300 feet per <clears> turn. <throat> wow. So, if you are it's dashing, six, is that double? Yeah. Yeah, 600 fast. feet. Lasts for eight hours. 100 feet a second. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty fast. Look at Booking it. Um, so you're going about if you're doing a hundred feet per second, that's what uh times six. six. We're going about a mile. A minute. Yeah, about a mile a minute. Nice. About a mile a minute. About a mile sixty a minute. miles an hour. Mm. Yep. Wow. So you are moving sixty miles an hour. Mm. Eros, you are now alone mm. with Jack sitting on the ground in his meditative yeah, space, stuff. and with, of course, a sleeping Arlo on your back. You have a shot wait. So paper. does he have to stay on my back? No, you okay. you can make whatever decision you want about it. You. Okay, Don't I throw just, me in the ground again. Always, always. <laughs> I just like slowly. Just like, uh, okay, you're gonna let him sleep right there beside you. Uh, yeah, because okay. I if if someone is going to fight me, I can't really right obviously do much. Gotcha. Okay, so you leaned uh, Arlo down right beside Jack as he is doing his thing. Can I like just can I just be like leaned up against Jack, just <clears throat> like back to back force gump style? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, and so these ships are pretty far out, several miles, um, far out. They don't know, they didn't know when they were going to land, but you guys got some traveling to do. It'll take you a good many minutes to get out there to do, to deal with this, with these ships. Um, as you pass by in the distance, you can see a, a bit of a force of enemies, you know, also miles away traveling down the road to Buckland from the east where Duncan, um, said they might come from. Can they communicate in the mist form? I don't think so. Their only okay. action would be to dash, dash okay. or to so they not can't be communicate. missed. Gotcha. So you guys are continuing on that way. Duncan also doesn't hesitate, so he's still heading that way. Um, but you do notice that in the in the distance. Um, and uh, Eros, you are free to kind of do as you <coughs> will. I'm assuming you're kind of posting up, um, keeping watch. Yeah, I'm just watching. Okay. The um, protector. I don't think I can do anything while I do anything. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, Jack, to your perception, as soon as you press the button, the world as you knew it ceased to exist. You appeared in a void. It's vanta black darkness all around you as if nothing exists. You feel as though you are floating in the ether, in the nothingness. And as you hold the orb, the only thing that you can see in your hand is the orb. And then as the radius increases, you can see the ground and the earth and like, you know, what would be inside that radius. So there, it started as like a single grain of sand and now it's growing and you can see the little patch of dirt in front of you and it's growing. And eventually you can see your own knees and eventually you can see arrows and eventually you can see, you can tell that um, Arlo is behind you. And as the radius increases and increases and increases... Um, but as you see that, you still don't feel present there. You feel as though your body is there, but you're you're not present with this. You're somehow in some other, you know, it's almost as if your consciousness is inside of the orb. You're you're witnessing it fill up. Do the people who touch the orb, well, have I seen anybody who didn't touch the orb? Has anybody run through no, the circle? not okay. yet. It's not that big yet. Um, but the people who didn't, who did touch the orb, uh, Arlo and Eros around you, they have this kind of purple aura about them as well as you can tell the edge of your your orb is kind of like burning along the ground in this purple magical type situation um and it increases and it increases and it increases um let's roll a d20 eros i'm so you did draw unfortunately the kind of the short end of the stick to kind of keep watch so you're you might be a little bit not much happening for you at the moment mm-hmm. but i do want to roll I'm sitting holding the uh ball. Josh, roll a d20, and Bryce, roll a d20. We'll see who we deal with first. 11. 20. All right, so we're going, hey, we're hey. going to deal with uh, what kind of goes on for Jack <clears throat> inside, and really this conversation, you can um, you know, spend as long as you want with it if you like. We can cut out and come back if you want. All right. But um, you hear echoing through the darkness the same voice that you heard when you were approached in the darkness in Moradin's storeroom. 
when that hex blade kind of approached you, right? The the pure darkness reached out for you and approached you, and he said he'd be back, right, to to speak with you. And and you you hear that again. You hear a voice um, coming through the ether, through the void to you, uh, and it says, "There is a great evil swirling in this world, Jack." And what might that be? Well, certainly part of it is the council is a cancer grown out of the depth of darkness which holds them and many others tightly. The darkness that comes from within. Their desire corrupts them, Jack. Desire for what, exactly? Desire, Jack. It's our desire that corrupts us all. We want. Well, you want. Running around in the world, wanting, desiring, taking. I don't want. I am. Maybe I was. His voice echoes in this chamber or in this void or you can't even tell how how is his voice echoing when there's no walls and it just kind of like reverberates it's almost as if you exist inside of this voice um and it asks what are you doing here i'm more or less waiting i suppose waiting for what for my task to be complete Whether that stops here or continues on, I have a job to do. What's your job, Jack? For now, it's to protect this world. And to break that up into smaller pieces, it's to protect this world. You think you can protect this world? I can try. From what? From the council you spoke of. It's exactly as you say. It is a pestilence, and it will need to be lanced. They're only one tumor, one symptom of a greed of a darkness that permeates your whole existence. Well, then what do you propose I do? I don't know what I propose you do, Jack. I'm here to... Just see if you want some help. After all, I told you I don't want. I don't need. I just am. Do you bargain? I've been known in the past to have dealings. Well, I don't need your power. I don't want it at any rate. But I do need your help. You don't want my power, but you need my help. Those sound like two ways to say the same thing. I need more your knowledge. You are an ancient being, I take it. I have been around. I am around. You know of my goddess, Melora? Yeah. Do you know of what has happened to her? Of course. I know what has happened to her, and it's happened to more than her. That's unfortunate. Before her. I want to bring her back. Why? Because I serve her. It is my sworn duty. I'm nothing if not a man of my word. Is she worth bringing back, Jack? That's not for me to decide. I gave my word. Honor. Integrity. These are not valueless things. What is it you propose for the return of your goddess? A hundred years of service. A hundred years? This is but a blink in my eyes. How will you make a hundred years worth it for me? One who does not want or desire. A hundred years, and you will have anything you need of me. I will perform any task that does not endanger 
what I'm trying to protect at this time. Bargaining for only moments, and you already add a caveat? Interesting. Tell me, Jack, what is it you will not do? I will not take the lives of the people I'm trying to protect here. Not my team, not the full hearts. And you believe they're worth your loyalty? They're worth something. They're at least trying. No one else seems to be. You make and, point. of course, this bargain will extend to my world. You aren't bargaining with this body, you're bargaining with this soul. Mm. You make interesting points, I suppose. If interests were a thing I could experience, maybe I do. Maybe I did. So, is that all you won't do then? Kill those you're loyal to? Give me a second. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to complete my objective as well. That is the whole purpose behind all of this. I won't aid the council in any way. Your objective being to save those whom you work for now. Correct. Very well. And in a hundred years, when I'm through with you and our deal is done, what then? Then we go our separate ways. I go, you go, we go our separate ways, Jack. Allow me to sweeten the deal. If you bring back Melora, I will face your champion. And if your champion can best me in combat, I will serve you until the end of my days. My champion, I suppose that could be entertaining. I'll have to decide if I wish to be entertained. I have unfortunate news, but bringing back a goddess, as you suggest, is not something I'll just do. But there is an avenue, there are paths and pathways all across the universe for use of all things, and I'm sure we could find one or two that lead to the rebirth or the past or the recreation of this goddess whom you hold so dearly and whom I hold dearly. You can feel the voice refocus. I accept your bargain. Excellent. Excellent. Well then. Tell me what you need. I will let you know when I need something specific. But, for now, keep your heart open. Your mind clear. And when a little bit of darkness find you, let it in. And then you feel alone completely again in this void as the as and it's almost as soon as he leaves that's when the light passes by your eyes and the the radius is getting you know deeper and deeper and there's more and more light coming in that you can see and you're now sitting out here in this uh on this land all alone holding this orb the only the only muscle that you feel as though you have control over in this moment um, you notice as well as this whole conversation was happening without you moving your mouth. Um, and the only muscle that you feel as though you have control over is your thumb to release that button. Um, can I see everything that is within the radius of the thing though, whether I look around or not? Yes. You kind of are experiencing this kind of out of body, out of body experience. Gotcha. And who knows what else is in this void? So I won't tell you that you feel completely alone as if this thing has disappeared. If you find that you want, you know, have questions that you want to shout into the void or, you know, things that you want to say or whatever, who knows what this is connected to. So you've already spoken to some ancient darkness. <laughs> 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 Who's to say what else lurks around in here? 
Um, so now let's move to... Let's... There's lots of talk of tumors and cutting... Th- like, I'm wondering, is there, like, after, like, side effects for this orb? I'm just... I'm wondering. <laughs> I mean... There's actually we... a little needle in it, that, like an LSD dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> None of that really happened. None of this is happening. Y'all are all standing around watching me twitch on the ground drooling. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean... Does, Jack, essentially, like, Arlo's doing the same thing. So. Yeah, Jack immediately presses the button and enters into a void where he comes face to face with like some ancient old one or whatever that thing might have been. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did make a deal with the devil within five minutes, so there could be some side effects from that. Who knows? Um, anyhow, let's... also set up for Keith to have some big bad evil guy come in swinging the actual hex blade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are you offer me the ability to like have a grudge match between you and oh you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Let's go see what Grim and um, Grim and Duncan are doing as they fly. Grunkin. Grunkin. Yeah. Many minutes have passed. You are now flying over rough seas as three <laughs> ships pass under you, or you know, in elevation wise. Obviously, you're not quite there yet. But you're seeing them approach three uh, Continental Army Orcish warships are sailing towards Buckland. These are ships with um, mostly wooden hulls. They look very much like pirate ships with three big masts. Their masts are made of metal, and the the sails hang off of them. Or you know, they're hardy-looking sails. The ropes are are almost chains. They look like from a distance. The the boats are lashed together with a lot of armor or a lot of like metal lashings and the portholes are made of steel and these are like just formidable looking warships. On the front of each of the ships is a different looking mage holding out, um, uh, you know, their robes flowing down the side. Sorry, this is a carving, like the front of a, like a mermaid or whatever. Um, a mage holding out their hand as the front of the ship and their robes billowing down the sides of this, you know, the, the way the ships look. In the front of the ship, you can tell that there's a big, like, uh, like a C-130 airplane cargo door where it would open up and landing craft would come out of. Um, uh, but those ships are sailing about 100 feet apart. They're moving at a swift speed. Their, sin- their sails are full, and they are, you know, maybe 20 miles or 10 miles, or you're not exactly sure how far you traveled, uh, but they're... A good many miles from the coast, but within striking distance for sure. So you're you're making it out here just in time uh, to take care of business. So mist wise, Duncan remembers what you said, and he goes over. I believe you told him to take the right one, the left or one. the left one. He moves over to the left, and Duncan moves to the right. Um, excuse me, Duncan. He, he doesn't go both ways. <laughs> uh, Duncan goes to the left, and Grim, you go over to the right, uh, and you find yourselves now, you know completely undetected your mist no one's looking for mist as you fly around the ships you can tell they totally um, you. <laughs> <laughs> as you fly around the ships you can tell uh an orc captain can be seen at the helm of each ship with its big steel metal wheel and he's sailing each uh ship he or she whichever one depends upon the, the ship you land upon um, and orc soldiers stand at attention on the decks. They stand ready to ready to attack. They are, you know, lined up, uh, holding their positions. There are some of them holding ropes. There are some of them, you know, performing whatever positions they would on a big old sailboat like that. These are big bad ships. They remind you of an armored version of Winifred's Waddle from Ooh. back in season The armored one. Waddle. Yes. Um, but you guys go floating around, and Grim, we're going to... We're going to... You act now as okay. you fly over. I'm going to go around behind and swoop down. Like, far enough distance, not of obviously, course. like, right over the head. Yeah. Um, so, wh- where, where exactly am I in relation to the ship? Uh, at this point, I picture you guys are flying kind of, like, directly at them. So, I'm I'm giving you the reins of this scene. Like, you're, you know, let's say 100 feet above it and looking down at it. And it's coming towards you. You're maybe two or 300 feet. It's moving towards you. Okay. I want to fly just straight over mm-hmm. and then kind of go down and float along the okay. 
water to the rudder. You find that you are able to keep up with the ship, but this thing is moving quickly, so it's not like you I mean you're you're pushing it. If you were to like dash as part of your mist, you're definitely able to keep up with this thing, but it, you wouldn't be able to pass it very quickly or whatever. But you you reach the the rear of the ship where you're looking for. Okay. Um, I want to. What what is it? What does the rudder look like? So the way this it looks like a a large metal rudder back here actually, um, and the way the ship looks is like you know, like the captain's quarters is sitting above you, so you're obscured from the rest of the ship, um, and then the back of the ship where the rudder is attached, there are a couple of little like lashings and steel things where you could like get your toes on and hang on, or whatever. But there's certainly no platform or anything back here. But the the rudder is probably eight feet deep 15 feet long or something and the water is just rushing past you um underneath okay um i'm gonna go over and just kind of like hover on that spot and then turn not missed okay you turn not missed let's do a so whenever picture i wanted to picture what when you turn unmissed what is, what is the first thing you're doing? What are you trying to hang on to? What yeah, are you... um, just anything. So the way I'm picturing it, like, there's space between, like, the rudder and the ship. There is. And then there's, like, little, like you said, like, the lashing things. Mm -hmm. So I imagine he's got, like, hand, like, around, if he can, the, like, thinnest part of the rudder up at the top. And then he's holding on to the other thing. The okay. Other lashing. Perfect feet, picture. Like, Let's up. roll. If you're doing any of that, we'll roll a strength check to see how well you hold on. Strength. And how well your toes... Can Catch I hold. ask a question about the rudder for the audience? Of course you may. Is there like a control mechanism that's visible? Is the, Are the lashings, like are they cables that pull it one way or the, the other? The control mechanisms, you don't see any. It goes like up into the where the ship is above you, and it looks like it's being turned maybe from up inside there. If you were a smaller creature, you might be able to worm your way up in there, but there's, the gaps are pretty small. I, when I say lashing, I'm, I'm like... The steel missed. bands that travel around the ship is what I'm more talking about, mm -hmm. where he can put his toes. That's what I'm like the the if you're toe looking, grabbing spot. Yeah, if you're yeah. looking on the wall of the ship, like there's steel rings that go around that kind of hold the different pieces of the ship together. On the back of the ship, I'm picturing you got your toes out there. You're holding up to a piece of that thin piece of rudder, and you know find another place for your hand. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's what I'm picturing when I say that. 22 22 you successfully whenever you uh whenever you demissed after a moment um before the sound was muffled a little bit but now you hear through human ears uh and you know asamari human ears whatever difference there are <laughs> um and you are now like a regular grim holding on to a boat underneath it as the water <laughs> underneath you you can hear the chants of orca soldiers you can hear above you the muffled sounds of all right men will be landed soon make sure your blades taste blood um i'm just gonna kind of grim's gonna mutter under his breath and kind of shake his head about to ruin their day <laughs> <laughs> um and i want to with one hand like reach in to the bag the the mimic and pull out the uh goo first okay and i'm gonna like find a good spot and slap that on there somehow okay very, very um judiciously yes um just dropping the bottle don't care about that it's empty excellent and then pulling out the tnt and like all right so let's roll I, I do want to do some rolls this is not gonna be the most difficult thing you've ever attempted but you know we're on you're holding on to a rudder there's a giant ship above you like this is you know delicate work so um roll a this this feels like a dexterous maneuver. I feel like it's more than brute strength. Can we do a dexterity roll for taking, you know, holding on? You already got the strength. I'm not going to make you you drop off, but how well you're able to hold on to these items, stick them to the wall, stuff like that. 22. A 22. You are able to, you I mean, it was, it's like you are Tom Cruise on the side of this. But taller. But taller, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you are absolutely down here. The water's rushing underneath you. You might as well have an earpiece in, holding one hand to it, saying like, "Don't go." <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, you slap the putty on the wall and you jam the uh, the dynamite into it. You doing one stick? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do one stick for now. I've only got three, okay. so just doing one. Um, and then I'm gonna whip out the little whatever it's called. 
and then yeah the igniter i guess yeah you got a pretty long fuse on this thing and it doesn't burn too quickly i picture you are pretty smart about it and you put the fuse upside down just in case some of your embers were to fall onto the the dynamite so you light it and then yeah he did that <laughs> i was actually gonna say grim like if it's if it's like this long, Grim's gonna light it like right here. Oh, like, no short? chances. Okay. <laughs> you want you shortening your burn time? Didn't we say it took about a minute to burn down or something? Um, yeah, something like that. So yeah, I want to shorten down the burn time and then just like bite off after it's, right after it's lit. Grim's gonna just jump off. Okay. He's just, <laughs> he's like peace, <laughs> dude. This is the coolest looking thing. <laughs> let's just let's just really visually all appreciate the fact that like. This buff dude in like a business suit, almost like with the vest, <laughs> his sleeves rolled up, whatever his armor on, holding a sh- like a shield on one arm. He's got a shield strapped to it, but holding onto this this rudder. Pull some dynamite out of his pocket. <laughs> the dynamite is lit, and he just like drops off the back scuba style. I'll do you one better. He's gonna like kick off, but he's gonna hold the shield in front of him. Okay. More cinematic. So. I can see this happening. <laughs> the fuse has been shortened enough. Mm-hmm. If it goes off while you're in the air, how many skips do you think you get? <laughs> At least all the way, seven. <laughs> all the way back. So what's that town on the water? Fark. Uh, no, um, something, something water is on oh. the edge of the... the Fire water? Uh, no. I can't remember the crap. town where you came, where you got Whoops, on one of crap. the waddle. But yeah. just all the way back there. Just the ticket lady. <laughs> Strong water? No. Yeah, it might have been strong water. I think it was. Um, anyway, you successfully light the fuse. The dynamite is burning, and you hold the shield in front of you, and you're able to fall back and not land flat on your back, but you land on your head and shoot into the water, you know, Olympic diver style. Nice. Sploosh. And what happens on the other side of that sploosh? You'll have to wait till next week to find out. Thank you for listening to Dungeon Boy.